Great. Well, hello, everybody. I can see you've been parting pretty hard because uh, everybody seems to be quite quiet this morning. It's always the way on Fridays, isn't it? Anyway, thanks for being here. And uh, we're going to start a little bit later than we planned. We have a presentation from the Walt Disney Company. They've been joining us for many years as sponsors, and they've got really interesting things to say about all the work they're doing about content for children and children's welfare. And we're going to be talking about how to promote children's welfare in the digital world. Veronica Lux is the Regional Manager of Corporate Social Responsibility at the Walt Disney Company in Latin America. It's going to be flanked by Mariela Reyman from chicos.net. They handle topics to do with content for children. Now, those of us who've been coming to these sessions for many years, uh, when there was the Tunis Summit, they were awarded a prize. And Adrian worked with the Cese Chamber to pay for her flights and travel arrangements. So we've known her for quite a long time. And it's really interesting, everything that they're doing. So um, I don't know who's going to be starting. I don't know if it's Veronica or Mariela. Are you there? Can you hear me? Can you hear us? Perfectly. Well, hi. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Olga, for the presentation and for the invitation. Thank you for being so supportive and for making the time to share this content with us. I've been seeing what it's about, and I think it's really interesting. So without further ado, I'll leave you with them. For those of you who don't yet know, this is a hybrid format. Uh, we have students from us, from all over Latin America with us today, both with us here in the room and also online from all over the world. Most people are from Latin American, but thanks to this online setup, we can broadcast all over the world. Over to you. Thank you very much. We're very, very happy to be here today speaking at the South School. When they invited us to take part, we were chatting with Mariela to see what we could bring you to complement what you've been talking about over the last few days. And we thought that it would be interesting to take a look at childhood, specifically childhood welfare in the digital context. We've been working about this for many years now with Walt Disney and Chicos.net. That's the 10th year that we've been working together, so we're celebrating. And oh, one important detail, I'm going to share our presentation. Well, please share, and we do have it here if you'd like it as backup. Great. I had forgotten that little detail. Now, as I was saying, this is our, our take on the children's welfare in the digital world. Now, at Chicos.net, we have working on this subject for a long time now. This is an overview of what we've been working on, the kinds of resources that we've developed together since 2012. We've been working on lots of different educational projects. And when we started back in 2012, this is more about online safety. That was the first focus of our work. And then we grew, we evolved. And obviously, we accompanied the context and responding to more immediate needs that have arisen over the years. So we looked at digital literacy, which is the main focus of our work. Obviously, we continue to work on online safety. But the main focus of our work is on digital literacy. These have been 10 years of, but really critical actually, because we started working back when internet became very much more widespread. Then there was cyber, the explosion of social media, games, smartphones, and then the pandemic and the post pandemic era. So, in fact, we've been working alongside that to evaluate the impact of technology on children's lives in terms of positive use, safety, and so forth. So, although 
we're working with young children, we are also looking at the wider global citizenship because we believe that this is how we achieve lasting change. We work with governments, companies, schools and families and obviously with children themselves. Today, one of the key challenges we face particularly for those of us working in children's rights in the digital sphere, is how do we achieve significant access to digital media on internet and how to ensure that this be an inclusive and equitable and universal access. I know that we've talked about significant access during this week. We've heard from people from Partners to Connect and the ITU. And we remember when we started working in this area, Olga, you might remember 25 years ago, we thought that internet was going to be some kind of democratizing tool of access to knowledge. And today, we know it's not quite the case. As digitalization and technology grow, so does exclusion. So what we're going to talk about today are some projects which have been devised strategically to foster good practices. I think that it's really important to talk about inclusion, as this has been our guiding star for the last few years. It is the focus of our social investment strategy, and it's actually part of our DNA. The purpose of the work that we do in terms of corporate social responsibility at Disney is to inspire a better world through the power of storytelling. We tell stories, storytellers, that's what we know how to do. Internally, that we say that's our superpower, right? Because it's a superpower, in fact, because stories have the power to build new realities for people. And that involves huge responsibility of which we are very aware. And we take this with very seriously. One of our focus points of our social investment program has to do with reimagining tomorrow through the stories and diverse voices to inspire a more inclusive world. I want to talk about diverse voices for a minute because we want our stories to be as representative as possible. We want everybody to feel identified with the stories that we tell. And for that to happen, both before and behind the camera, we need to ensure diverse teams of diverse people from all kinds of different backgrounds with different life stories to tell. So one of our priorities in terms of investment is to offer training and educational opportunities, which have to do with our industry, to people from minority groups or groups that are less represented who perhaps don't have the opportunity to access this kind of training in order to diversify the industry and promote access to representativity within the company and the industry as a whole. Technologies, part of that, part of the disciplines that uh, we're involved with. We invest in training in areas that have to do with acting and subtitling and technology and production. Just so you have an idea of what areas our strategy has been deployed in. And before we go on, I want to tell you a little bit about the focal points of our work and share some projects with you. We thought it was important to first explain what the current context is in terms of digital environments. The question is, why is it so important to talk about children's welfare and digital inclusion at this point and in our region in Latin America? Where is childhood on the map? We know that there is also, there's still a significant percentage of children who do not have access to connectivity or internet. And in such a technologically dependent society today, this, this is a basic human right. However, the greatest gap, perhaps the most complex and invisible one, is the, is the, difference 
between those with the skills to make the most of the potential and opportunities offered by technology and those who are left behind because they don't have these skills. Now, the concept of the digital gap that we used to work with which distinguish between those who are online and offline is actually now obsolete because the, the, it was just too black and white. I think that even if we connected 100% of all children, the social digital gaps will still persist because they're based on what we're seeing today, which are existing problems. Students don't have <clears throat> the ability to access texts or what's going on if they don't have basic skills. So we need to see how we can best bring technology to them to help foster these skills and learnings. As we move closer and closer to 20 and 30, the concerns about the strategic development grows growing because we know that their development innovation do not exist in a sustainable way if they do not include children in all their diversity. So our presentation will focus on key areas and strategies and recommendations which we think are essential when it comes to working with children so that we can develop technological solutions that will enable us to reach more children. We'd like to invite you to help us identify these key areas as we tell you about our projects. The project that we're going to share with you today is called Stories to be Told. And these, this project was born. 2020, as a consequence of all these 10 years of work that we've done, all these learnings that we've uh, put together from all the work that we've done. And obviously, in the context of the pandemic, schools had closed. There's an educational emergency affecting the entire region. And we thought, what could we do? to use, to make the most of everything that we'd learned, to contribute something significant that could be used in different contexts throughout the region. So we developed this platform, which we call Histories to be Told. It has digital resources, which combine digital media and storytelling to develop 21st century skills, social emotional skills, and to promote literacy. Because particularly in this project, we consider that literacy is a com very comprehensive issue. It has to do with writing and reading, which this platform is focused on and offers a different range of strategies to tackle this, but also digital literacy. Children who are literate today must be able to combine both things. So it, that's the focus. This platform has lots of educational resources on it for children from age to 8 to 11 from Spanish-speaking countries in the region. There are also teacher res training resources and for families and parents because we thought it was very important to integrate them too. And finally, another key point is that the, it has a folk diversity focus, which is very wide ranging, as it tackles all areas of diversity. Today, childhood in the region is very diverse. You can't talk about a single childhood. Every country has its own logic, and there are all kinds of different childhood experiences within each country. And we thought that it was very important to bear all this diversity in, in mind. I, I, I just wanted to say something about the first of these keys, which is the focus on 21st century skills. This is a digital inclusion project. But it doesn't just talk about technology. Technology is a way of fostering or stimulating these skills, as the focus is really on skills such as creativity, collaboration, problem solving. 
because we consider that these skills are transferable, which today can work in one scenario to solve a specific problem. And maybe I can use them tomorrow in something else. Technologies change, but skills are things that children need and will remain with them all life. So the stories as a component of this approach are an empowering tool for the skills that we want to foster because these skills enable children to create, to connect ideas, to create sequences. It's a vital resource, storytelling. And it promotes all of those skills together and technology empowers it or enhances it. So we'd like to share this video with you, which tells you a little bit more about the histories to be told. The growth of technology of the last few years has impacted on the way we communicate and we create, share and consume content. History is to be told is a digital platform for children from 8 to 11, inviting them to create their own stories using digital media. The art of telling stories is combined with digital media and the maker culture to accompany the development of 21st skills, social, emotional and reading writing skills, enhancing the possibilities offered by technology. Today, I'm going to show you something that I've been working on. The initiative helps to build a more equal society through a proposal which encourages diversity and provides answers to the priority of social economic contexts in Latin America. We offer innovative free resources which can be used with or without connectivity. The platform is organized into three pillars, exploring, creating, and telling. Exploring continues a series, a um, little fictional series, which introduces people to storytelling. Creation is for an interactive platform, which accompanies story writing. And telling, storytelling invites them to turn stories into videos, games, shorts, comics, and all, many, many more. Stories to be told has obtained amazing results. More than 150,000 people are using the website. Over 87,000 stories have been created on the platform, and over 24,000 teachers have been benefited. Over 690,000 children are already part of Histories to be Told. 24 organizations are allies throughout the region. It's all about motivation. It's wonderful that they can express themselves. It's accessible. You feel extra motivation. We can do this. Reaching a community which doesn't have those privileges was something amazing. It's really cool because it encourages you to carry on. It helps you be more creative. I like putting together the people and dressing them up. Them, You could feel the emotion of the story, like if you were really living it. And they said that they didn't know that it was their planet. Through this platform, .chicos.son, 